Good afternoon, Rock. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm a graphic designer. I've been a graphic designer for 20 years now. And uh, funny enough, I started school in uh, psychology. And uh, one day I called my mom and I'm crying over the phone. And I tell her, I said, uh, Mom, it's too hard. It's too hard. And she said, no, no, no. It's just that you're not following your passion. And but since you were a boy, you were drawing covers and redoing CD posters and, you know, redoing tomato cans in labels. And, and then I listened to her, switched my major to graphic design. And I've been doing it since. I'm one of the lucky ones who uh, absolutely adores what he does. Now tell me about some of the graphic uh, design that you do. You do you do several things, but you're you're involved in commercial design as well as uh, graphic design. Am I correct in that? Absolutely, thank you. Uh, yeah, well, we do. You know, when it comes to a businesses, often they need you know they require signage and and commercial you know use of the space and redesign of the interiors and and uh, what not to match the entire theme and and um, you know to give it a, a seamless approach and so we do all of it when it comes to business and uh, and it's a lot of fun it's so every client is so different and we for five years we were the graphic designer to the canadian cancer society the daffodil ball fundraiser and we did uh, a lot of book covers for eckhart tolle and and a lot of uh, we call them local heroes a lot of businesses that are need help to be to be well seen and to be perceived as 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 good as what they, they offer and often graphics will give you that that tool and, and, and graphic uh, artwork is all part and parcel to selling a product, in effect, is it not? Yeah, exactly. Like, there's two kinds of business. There's, you know, business that sells a service and business that sells, uh, um, you know, a product. So it's two different approach because you have to define the unique selling proposition of, you know, the, the service provider, which is usually the owner and their staff. Uh, when it comes to teaching or yoga classes or fitness training or accounting, these are personal, uh, you know, uh, services. But it's also product. When you do sell a product, then it's about defining the uh, the unique selling proposition of the product itself. So it's two kind of different market research, and it's a lot of fun. I absolutely love what I do. Um, I understand that you had uh, some, uh, maybe not a compulsion, but you were thinking about possibly working in, in, in either Paris, New York, uh, possibly even Toronto. We won't even talk about Toronto, but uh, <laughs> in, in Paris and New York. What, what made you just decide to come to Can stay in Canada and work on the West Coast? Well, I'm, I'm Canadian. I was born in Montreal, and but, uh, my on my father's side, they come from France. And then I had to, uh, you know, I had to kind of pick a place where I wanted to uh, to stabilize. And when I finished school back east, I uh, came to spend the summer in Vancouver. And you you only have to spend one summer in Vancouver to uh, you know BC and the Yukon, the, the west coast of Canada is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I love Canada as a whole. The Canadians and the, the values of Canadians is uh, the place, the best place to be in my heart. But. Um, West Coast is, is the best of both worlds. I absolutely love Vancouver. Now, you are coming uh, to Whitehorse to, to do a couple of workshops, and one of them is, is a training workshop on branding and marketing. Most, a lot of people would think those two are exactly the same, but they aren't, are they? Oh, they're not. They, see, branding is kind of like, you know, graphics is the curtain. That's the first thing people see when it comes to your website or your printed ma matter, you know, brochures or business cards or whatnot, or the packaging on your, on your uh, you know, what it is you're selling. And then the, uh, the branding itself is the soul of, you know, what it is you're trying to say. And marketing is how you say it. So if you can define clearly what is your branding, what is the soul, what's behind the curtain, then it makes it a lot easier to create the curtain because the first thing people will judge is what they see. They, they don't have the choice. They, don't, they can't taste it right away. They can't experience it right away. So they can only look at what they see first. And then the branding comes, comes uh, you know, it's a lot easier when you know exactly what you're trying to say. And once you've got that taken care, then the marketing is, is binding both of them together. So you know exactly who you're talking to, who your niche is, what's the language you should always be speaking. So so you stay solid, consistent, and relevant. I have to ask you this question. Uh, have you ever had a client who has come to you with an idea, who is bound and determined to make it uh, the only idea and, and just wants you basically to design something around it, and you know uh, right off the bat that it's a really <laughs> bad idea? You don't have to, you don't have to name names. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. I mean, it's really funny because, you know, when you hire, uh, you know, a professional, you have to, you know, you have to trust your professional. And, but, I mean, the client is always right. So you, you, the way we go about it is, like, if somebody comes and they've got a very defined idea, we're going to talk about their needs. We're going to talk about what their needs is. And to, just to say, is your idea, you know, speaking to, to that niche? And then what we do is, is, you know, to make sure the client feels respected and, and, and uh, heard, we'll design exactly what the client has asked. And then we'll also design a version of what it is it's in their best interest with our knowledge and experience. And, and nine out of time, they will, they will pick what we've designed because they feel respected. 
And we've included it in our design. They feel respected, but usually they'll go with what it is that we, we've designed. And sometimes it's funny. It's going to be, you know, six months later, they're going to go say, you know what? The first design you showed me, can we go back to it? And, and, uh, and then, and then the, the one person, the one out of 10 that doesn't, well, the only difference is that it doesn't make it to a portfolio. You know, like it's all about, you know, it's all about making sure that we, we've done the best we can. And, and at the end, if the client is happy, that's their ambassador and it will show when they hand out their product, the energy of them, the way they stand tall, you know. Can you tell me about some of your more successful uh, uh, designs? Oh, they're stuns. I mean, like, sorry, I, I don't mean to, to, to blow my own horn, but it, it's uh, like every... every it's, o- it's okay that you do that because that's why you're coming to Whitehorse, to blow your own horn. You're, you're allowed to do that. Well, it's my. I, mean, I have to say, you know, be, before like the, uh, you know, I have to thank Laurie Gendron, Stephanie Bourré, Nancy Power, uh, and uh, L'Association Franco You Connais for inviting me again. It's my second time. I absolutely love White Horse. I've never seen water that color. And when I when I went to White Horse, uh, I was very, um, as a, as a French Canadian, I was very moved to see that one of the most beautiful buildings in the city is actually the one that represents the francophones. So I'm very excited to go back and speak to people and, and show them, you know, uh, if, you know, if I can just give them some tools to help them define their business, have better businesses. And for me, that's my goal. And this is a successful, a successful story to start with. But I mean, there's a, I had a woman calling me a few, um, that was really funny. A few years ago, she called me and she says that she was a fitness trainer and, and starting an empire. And, and she says, I need help with my logo, my branding, my commercial space, my website. Can you help? And I said, oh, yeah, of course. You know, and, and she's just calling. She's not meeting me. I can tell she's, she's shopping for uh, design firms. And, and then, um, uh, and then usually, you know, you don't give a quote over the phone. You want to meet them because it's one of the things we, we like the best is to see people face to face to really define what they need. And so she's really pushing for a quote and, and I just want to get off the phone. And, and so I give her a quote and I go to the worst case scenario because you want to be refused for being too expensive. You don't want to be refused for having a bad client or a bad relationship with your client. And, and uh, she wanted a quote and I gave her the price. And so she uh, she goes, she says, uh, oh, my God, that's so much money. If I had the time, I would do it all by myself. I would design my logo and my website, and I just don't have the time. So I tell her, I said, um, do you consider yourself a good fitness trainer? And she said, oh, yeah, absolutely. And I said, uh, should I hire your services? She said, oh, yeah. So I told her, I said, I said, okay, tell you what. If I go to a big band store and I buy myself a DVD of a working out and, and put it into my DVD player at home and do my workout by myself with the books, and is it as good as if I hired you? So there was a minute of no speaking on the phone, and then she said, when can I meet you? And she's still my client. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> that is excellent. And it's so true. It's so true. Now, Terrence, you're coming to Whitehorse, as I mentioned. You're going to do a, a couple of uh, workshops. One of them is on branding and marketing, but the other one is uh, on public speaking. Yes, it is. You know, I, I, for anybody who's known me for the last 10 years, it's impossible for them to think that I, I, I was the shyest guy in the class. I could not speak in public. I could not go to social events, and I would hide like you know wallflower. And and uh, you know when it comes to let's say you want to become a, you know a basketball player, well if tomorrow I decide to be, become a basketball player, I, I'm not going to grow an extra foot. If tomorrow I decide to sing like Pavarotti, my vo- vocal cords are not going to expand to sing like him. These are physical gifts that you're born with. When it comes to public speaking, it's something you can learn. And and uh, the the talk is about you know giving them tips and pointers, really funny stories, and how you can you can develop that skill and 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 be really good at it. And every and this is good for business, it's good for personal, it's good for social events, and and uh, a lot of fun. And it just takes a little practice. Just a little practice, and and a little trust in yourself, and and little tools to help you in the beginning, and and then you'll be fine. All right. Terrence, thank you so much for talking with us today, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you next week uh, on the 11th and 12th at uh, the uh, the French Association, French uh, Francophone Centre. Um, and if people need to get more information, they can contact the centre and uh, get lined up for it. I'm sure there will be a lineup. Thank you so much, Rock. And I'd like to thank, uh, you know, the IFI for having me again, and also Greener Print for uh, uh, sponsoring the event. All the printing of the uh, handouts will be green, recycled paper, and vegetable inks. Terrific. Thank you so much, Terrence. Have a good day.